Welcome back to Wine Dan, the podcast where we talk wine and everything, and I mean everything that goes with it. Today we are going to be talking about comedy with Andrew Joyce. Of course, you know my lovely co-hosts. We have Chris and Halia. Welcome. Lovely, Thank you. Lovely to stretch for me, anyways. Just <laughs> take the compliment. Thank you. I have You're a hard welcome. time doing that. Yeah. Uh, let's get right into the wine. Yes. Cool. Um, so wine and comedy. I brought. A wine called Pim Ray from the 2016 vintage in Napa Valley. This is actually their inaugural release of this wine. And usually, Andrew, we have like two wines per show, three wines sometimes. Mm -hmm. We blew our budget for the entire season on this wine. Uh, Ten bottles left in Hawaii right now. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Um, this Pim Ray is an amalgam of Robin Williams' two kids. They're two middle names. Uh, and this wine actually comes from Robin Williams' old property. Yeah, his own vineyard that he owned. Uh, a family out of Bordeaux, the Tesseron family of Ponte Conet fame, um, bought it. And in order to pay homage to Robin Williams and his kids, they kept the name. But this is the very first wine they released um, already to like monster scores and monster price points. And let's get drunk and talk comedy. Well, cheers right. to Robin Williams and comedy. Cheers. cheers. You gotta look oh, at me in the eye. You gotta look at me in the eye. They, oh, look at that expression. <laughs> you know, we should have poured a glass for Lanai shirt away. Yeah. Because I'm getting the eye. Oh, like, yeah. I just dove Ooh. right in, man. Yeah. Like, I just. So, how do you like it? Is, uh, it's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Come on, be really honest. I, I don't know. I, I, like, I know nothing mm. about wine. I mean, this. this this tastes good. I, I couldn't Perfect. do like, it's an oaky after-ish taste or something. <laughs> we try smells to like grapes. <laughs> I don't, I, fermented I don't know. grapes. Fermented, fermented grapes, grapes, yes. We try mm. to stay away from that as much as possible here too. So you're good. <laughs> no, you're good. It, it is good. It is good. So this is from 2016. Yeah, Robin Williams is Otis State. It's just, you know, we, we do the wine and things and it's like food. That's really easy, right? We can just pair wine and food. These ones are a little bit more of a stretch, right? But like to get a wine, first off, I don't know how I was able to get a bottle. And then to share the story of one of the world's greatest comedians, right? Yeah. Who tragically it's passed away. Smooth. And who doesn't yeah. love Robin Williams? Right. Don't you? I know. Did you look up to him no. growing up? Or? We, well, we, I just literally watched uh, Mrs. Doubtfire the other day. Class. Totally oh. brought me back to my childhood. <laughs> he was so good in that movie, man. Yeah. Like he was, and there's like the good, you know, there's like a story behind yeah. it that kind of brings a little tear to your eye as well. Yeah. But yeah, his, and he was really high energy, which is like, if you guys ever see me on stage, like that's, I'm like bouncing off the walls. Dude, you're hilarious. Like, yeah. Your physical comedy is, I mean, who was your, who was your influences? So definitely people ask me my favorite comedian and my favorite comedian is Chris Farley, who like Makes never did sense. comedy like mm -hmm. on stage really, uh, other than like Saturday Night Live, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not real stand up. Mm -hmm. But I just, in high school, I would, every day we had this little break, you know, at like 10 o'clock and I would do Chris Farley bits. Like the things he was doing on Saturday Night Live, I was doing and I was like falling down on desks. And, and I mean, obviously I'm not as big as Chris Farley, but still, <laughs> Like it was, you know, I love that. And I just bring that to the stage, like. No, you can see it, yeah. that's awesome. Wait, but you're a teacher too. Yes. So I'm assuming you were the class clown when you were a kid. Yeah, it's really How weird. Do you, I, <laughs> you get, you get, you got yeah. what you asked for. You were the That's one in right the class. there. Yep, I was definitely the Kolohe one. I, in middle school, I was like such a bad kid. My parents were both teachers too. So this is like super embarrassing. I was such a bad kid that they had come and sit with all my seventh grade teachers. And like, be, they're like, you know, like we have a problem with Andrew. Like he is acting out. He always wants to make people laugh. And I remember after that like meeting, well, my parents are like livid and like I'm grounded for, you know, can't go outside. And we didn't even have TVs back then, right? Like in my room, like grounded meant you were laying in bed all day. But um, I told my dad, he was like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? You're gonna, you're not getting a good education. Like <laughs> hammering on me and I'm like, well, I kind of want to be like, a comedian or like a clown or something. Like I want to make people laugh. I like, I like making people laugh. So anyway, that wasn't a good response for my dad. He got a little more upset because he was like, this is why you're in trouble. You're making people laugh. That's why he had to go and be embarrassed and sit with your teachers for the last two hours. So anyway. How do you treat the class clowns in your class though? 
You go oh, a little wait. more lenient? I try, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so. Well, you were that kid. I, yeah. yes, yeah. I was. And I just try to laugh with them. And I try to make, I, I try to make the kids laugh. Like mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's a little bit easier. Well, sometimes you think it's a little bit easier with, with 10 year olds than adults. But sometimes they're like, oh, you do some sort of pun and they're like, oh, that's, that's stupid. And you're like, ah, oh, 10 year old said my joke was stupid. <laughs> and you, you feel terrible for a second. But I try to get them to laugh too. And I try to keep the kids okay, engaged well, through that. I want to know a little bit of this, like whole puns that you tell them and they're just like, no, but we have to take a quick break. So when we get back, we'll see what puns he tells his students. See you guys soon. Wine Ad brought to you by Locations, whose team of trusted neighborhood experts have been helping Kama'aina to buy and sell homes since 1969, locally owned and operated. Wine Ad brought to you by Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Welcome back to Wine and Comedy. Who doesn't love comedy, right? I love okay, comedy. So right before we started this episode, you were getting yourself all psyched out and you're hyping up and you're just like this ball of energy. Is is that what you do before your show? So yeah, and I get made fun of a lot for it. <laughs> you should have heard but these you... two behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 we don't even know what his hype. Which is why it was so mean. Oh my you didn't gosh, even know. Chris. Anyways, Andrew, continue. He's just trying to be a bro with you. Yeah. That's my whole we thing. We are bros. That's We're thing. homies. Yes, oh, I love that. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> He's the one who's responsible for this fabulous bottle of wine that tastes <laughs> and you're amazing. amazing. We don't need to sell it, bro. Look People at... can't even find it. We don't need to sell it. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, can you show us like, like how you get hyped, though? I do you really, really want to see it? Okay. Like, like, full on. Maybe we should like push the chair back. push the chair back a little bit? All right. I'm like kind of stuckish, but this is really what I do. I'm like, all right, all right. First joke is this. It's gonna be hilarious. I don't usually fall down like that. And I'll do that, and people will be like, whoa, bro, calm down. And sometimes we'll do it at like bars, like regular bars. So it's like people are there eating dinner, not coming to see comedy, right. and I'm out in the bar like jumping around, and they're like, what is going on? Like, is this guy gonna get in a fight? But it gets me like the oxygen going, right. and it gets me. Ready for game time. Yeah, ready for game time. There exactly. you go. Yeah. You still get nervous before bits? Every single show, like oh, no wow. matter. And and I've done like, I've, I've headlined a couple times doing like 45 minutes. So that's like crazy. But even like a five minute set, like I won't feel nervous during the day, but like the hour, hour and a half before, I'm like, oh man, what if I'm not funny tonight? What if nobody <laughs>, laughs at all? What if they think I'm terrible and throw tomatoes at me? Like, <laughs> just, you have to have a I sense know, of like, it. like just, just go for it, right? Because you don't know. And the jumping gonna... thing gets me yeah. like, we're going for it. Yeah. So, I love that. That That's means you awesome. still care though. Yeah. yeah. You know, That's like- I do. Uh, I, I always like, I live by this mantra, pressure is a privilege. Mm. So to feel that way about something to like, when I stop caring about this and when I'm not, like I don't do my research or I don't care about the wines, then I'm gonna find a job in real estate or, or something, you know, mm-hmm. I just, I wanna get out of the business. Yeah. I love that. Something you actually care about. So how do you uh, like formulate your show or what you're going to? So honestly, a lot of the jokes have come from teaching like oh. like silly stuff like working with so i'm a pe teacher now so i teach kindergarten all the way up through sixth grade Aww. and um like a kindergartner came up to me one day and i'm just standing there like the kids are playing he's not playing at the time and he starts rubbing my arm <laughs> and he goes huh, where'd you get all those hairs i don't have those hairs and like just silly little stuff like that from a kindergartner or first grader ends up being material you know mm. so i have a lot of school jokes and then i actually have a fair amount of local jokes just from i've been here 16 years now so hold the kind of bro but like a lot of like outside of looking in stuff you know right. what i mean like you know because i'm from a different background i didn't grow up here um so and i love i love local comedians like guys who get up there and are doing their whole set and who's some of your favorites so you don't need to say lanai <laughs> I mean, it would probably help though. <laughs> Bro, he wasn't even on my list, man. He wasn't, even, he wasn't even on my list. Now he's going to be like, we're never inviting this guy back for nothing. <laughs> Wine and nothing. That's what he's getting. Um, I really like James Mane. 
Um, Tumua Tuine is, I mean, dude, I saw that kid start. I don't know, like he's huge on Instagram now. Like we played yeah. basketball together, me and Tumua. And after we play basketball, 12 year old comes up and is like, oh, you the brother from, oh, let me get one pic, let me get one <laughs> selfie. And I'm like, what the, dude, you got 12 year olds taking pictures of you? We're at the park playing basketball. He's one of my favorites. And this other guy, Daryl Bonilla is one of mine. So those, uh, they're a little lesser known than your, you know, Augies and Kaleo Palanca and that guy sitting over there. What was his name again? It was Lenai, 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 Lenai. that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Well, look at you. <laughs> but. Wow. It, I mean, Hawaii has such a unique sense of humor, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the local people here laugh about everybody and like you, people don't really get offended. It's just kind of like a lighthearted. I do want to ask about like, did, did a joke ever like offend somebody? Like, were you ever in a heated like, Ooh, you told somebody, one. and we know like you're from here, you respect, I mean, you're, you know, lived here for 16 years, you respect the culture, but has anybody like, oh, brah, when you finish, <laughs> I can meet me in a parking lot. You know what? We're going to get right back yeah. to that answer right after this break, but I, I can't wait to hear this one. Rest easy with the new windows from Windows Hawaii, featuring Ali'i Extreme Windows with their exclusive sound reduction and security package. Call 671-0808 today. 120-day peace of mind guarantee exclusively at Inspiration Interiors. Inspiration will refund you the difference if you find a lower price on identical merchandise delivered in Hawaii. everyone welcome back to wine dan the podcast where we talk wine and everything that goes with it and it just so happens we are talking everything comedy hello hello back again all right so commercial break <laughs> <laughs> do you feel pumped now that we yeah, did the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like up again <laughs> that's what we did off camera all of us did that yeah, yeah right right okay so what is like i don't know a joke that you said that probably wasn't the best but uh -huh. I don't know if it's okay for the podcast. Uh -huh. So we'll, was it that bad? We'll, we'll say. Okay, well, say well, another joke then. For the extended version. Pe people were offended. Okay. So. Well, how about we do another joke then? Well, we'll, sell, right. we'll, say, we'll save the real raunchy stuff for the extended version. We'll do, yeah. yeah, we can do. We can do. What you were asking before about school. We can do a teacher joke. Yes, teacher jokes. There you go. Yeah. Okay, go. Guys, I'm a PE teacher. Okay. Gym teacher. If you want to be a jerk about it, Milani. <laughs> Guys, I love teaching PE. Is this the camera? Can I look at that one? I love Stare teaching PE because it means every day I get to wear the short shorts. You know the short shorts your PE teachers used to wear? Uh -huh. You know those? I get to wear those and I get to show off these creamy <laughs> white thighs every day. Huh? Look at them. They're like alabaster. They're amazing. But can you do that on this podcast? Do you do oh, yeah. that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, Andrew. <laughs> I do like teaching PE because while you guys are, you know, stuck inside, well, you guys have a great job. You're stuck inside drinking wine all day. But while the rest of you are stuck in your offices, guys, I get to be outside all day and I get to play games with little kids and I get to hit them in the face with dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> right? Take that little Johnny. Oh, wait, guys, it's Hawaii. Take that little Kavika. <laughs> The bit goes on from there, but that's a PE joke. Oh, good, good job. Good. Uh, that was great. Thank you. Thank I have to you. say, you I'm so glad you're not show. my PE teacher. Thank you. Funny story, I almost didn't pass PE my senior year. How? I feel like you we just have to show up. Do you hear more about this? <laughs> because I never wore shoes. And I just didn't really, I feel bad now, but I just didn't take my PE teacher that seriously. And was he kind of like to, Andrew? No. Oh. Like he would be like, he's cool. He's a cool PE teacher. Yes. Yeah, I know. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I never brought shoes. I always wear slippers. And then we had to run like our two mile run. And I was already probably on the shit list with my PE teacher. And rather than, you know, finishing the final lap for the two, um, I went through one of the um, fields and they also had sprinklers in the field. And just so happened when I was deciding to walk through, the sprinkler system came on and my best friend in high school tried to save me so hard and said that I, um, I sweat profusely. Obviously, like being soaked from head to toe is not, yeah, I had to redo it, otherwise I failed PE. Oh my gosh. So the takeaway for me is like the diva-ness started like in high school. <laughs> 
<laughs> At least I'm consistent. <laughs> That's comedy. <laughs> no, that's funnier than my stories, man. I'm stealing it. It's stolen a while. So you can you take get a it. Lot of, do you get a lot of students that try to cut or try to cheat? And it's elementary school, so like those oh. kids, like they want to be yeah. there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they just want to run around like chickens mm. with their heads cut off. So like I'm their favorite. I'm seriously like I don't want to brag. Who's ever watching this? <laughs> but like, I am like famous at my school, man. Like I walk around school and everybody, hey Mr. Joyce, hey Mr. Joyce, hey Mr. Joyce. Like I am, and they're like the little kids are like hugging my leg. And I mean I'm not that tall, but they're still like up to my knee, and I'm like having to drag them, like, because I'm the PE teacher. Did you ever have to like stifle yourself from like laughing or like smiling with one of the kids? Because they're probably so serious and into that whole like we gotta do this that you're like. Yeah, all the time. The <laughs> hardest thing is the swearing. Oh, yeah. The not swearing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hurry your things go, yeah. A up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially with the older kids, you're like, I said fudge. It was fudge. <laughs> I said, put those fudging balls away. Because <laughs> oh, well, you don't do a lot of swearing in your, in your comedy, right? I try not to. I try mm. not to. It depends on the, depends on the venue, but I try, I try not to. Is that harder or easier? It's definitely a lot harder to write completely clean. Um, jokes with F-bombs mm -hmm. and, you know, S-word are a lot easier than, or even, you know, jokes about sex and stuff like that mm -hmm. are a lot easier than, because everybody's got jokes like that. It's a lot easier than making Chris has got jokes like that, some dirty jokes. Yeah. <laughs> show. Talk about that hey, eggplant hey. emoji. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're talking eggplant emoji? <laughs> yes. See, no, without context, it sounds dirty. <laughs> it worked well. It worked well. I'm no comedian, but I think it, I think it worked okay. Yeah. You have to watch our episode of Wine and Dating, and you'll see Wine what, and dating. You'll yep. see what All right. <laughs> what Can I be honest with you? I don't watch any of these. <laughs> I know. Wow, and this is only... I'm here. Why do I need to watch it again? All right, well, I'm just going to do us all it. a favor and uh, take it to a commercial break. <laughs> when we get back, we'll talk more with Andrew. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on our own Instagrams. Do you have an Instagram, Andrew? Yeah, I do. What? It's <laughs> Tro M One Shaka. And just like that, we'll see when we get back. <laughs> Welcome back to Wine and Comedy with Mr. Joyce. We're just talking about him being a PE teacher, um, but let's get back to the comedy side. So I want to know. We want to know what your creative process is like. How do you come up with your jokes and? based on your crowds, how do you, you write them down? Oh yeah, I definitely, well, I'm a teacher. I'm like really prepared. Like there's mm. comedians who can go out there and be kind of cold and just like feed off the crowd. I can't do that. So it usually starts with like something that happened in school, something happened, I play golf and like we're hanging out in the parking lot after drinking beer, something funny happens there and I put it in my phone and then I try to flush it out by writing it and try to like sort of memorize the whole thing word for word and then I'll go to an open mic Mm. I'll do the joke, I'll listen to it, and I'll see, okay, what's funny, what needs to be eliminated, and then we kind of go from there. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the greatest writer. I'm still doing jokes from like 2017, <laughs> but that's okay, they're still funny. People right. laugh, as long as you pretend that it's, well, I just wrote this out in my car before I got here. <laughs> they think it's brand new, so. You know, it's funny, like, it wasn't until maybe a year ago when I realized that people actually write out their, their whole entire script. Like, I thought all of that was, like, improv and kind of just, you know. Oh, like comedians? Like, yeah. word for word kind? Like, yeah. teleprompter stuff? I, so I start out by writing the whole thing down. And now at this point, you know, every joke is just has a name. Right. Right. And so I'll write it down. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, I'm going to do this joke, this joke, this joke, this joke. Do you joke. tailor make it for different crowds or different venues? Yeah, because there's certain times where it is like clean. So you have to make sure you're not doing any of that, you know, R-rated stuff or whatever. Um, and then I really like there's certain venues where you like it's literally people are sitting this far away. I'm on the stage, which is just a carpet sometimes, mm -hmm. and I'm this far away. So I like that because I can get like in their face. So that would be a little bit different set than when I'm like up on a stage, like removed. What's preferred? From. Like, what's do you have a fun venue that you do? I would. So my favorite venue, well, I really like square barrels because square barrels is set up like this. Like you two are kind of eating dinner and you're the first row and I'm like this close to you. So I can like lean right mm -hmm. in there, you know? And um, oh, but so you then, like interrupting people's dinner. Oh yeah, I love interrupting. <laughs> and don't you dare use your cell phone in that first row. I'm on you. You like, have a joke for that rice. too? 
Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm always like, oh, this lady's texting about how funny this little leprechaun man is. She's texting <laughs> her best friend. Let's see, she's right here. <laughs> Put your phone away. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do uh, like different impressions with your voice? Cause uh, I get the PG in a little bit, yeah. small kind, small kind. But uh, I don't know. I lived in South Carolina for a while, so I have the Southern accent now, mm. pretty good. Ooh, let's hear it. A bad gum. What y'all fixing to do today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do your parents uh, still kind of have that accent? I uh, know. So my parents grew up in like. Maine and Massachusetts. Oh. So my dad, when he gets drunk, he has that hard like, oh, we had a pack of cats. We get hat over here. <laughs> like, Whoa, bro. Like, you don't talk like that. Um, but uh, yeah. So here, here's a question. So in, in like dating and so forth, have you ever tried to like, you know, crack a joke and it didn't it didn't work <laughs> or you know as a flirting tactic oh right Cause... i am terrible with the ladies <laughs> my girlfriend right now asked me <laughs> out <laughs> i'm serious like you're like you get up on stage and talk in front of hundreds of people and i'm like yeah but that's different than if it's like hey chris like <laughs> you know like it's different you so got, she you would have got me with that thank you so, yeah. thank oh, you. Really? i appreciate yeah. that just because love. of the hair part like this i did this move uh, yeah, you yeah you touched your hair it's suave where'd you get all that hair, <laughs> all that hair come from. <laughs> that's right well so where can we find you then so uh tuesday nights are at hawaiian brian's it's, uh, they just opened it. it's called slack key lounge and that's that yeah. first room hawaiian brian's uh, Wednesday nights shows are at the Blue Note, which is down in Wikes, and then Thursday night shows are at Square Barrels, and then Saturdays it's in the um, uh, over there in the Aloha Tower. It's the Beach Bar, I want to say it's called, but I'm not there every single night. It's like a rotation. But if you want to see live comedy, that's where you go. One of those Ooh. three places. So. <laughs> Starting August, you're going back into your shows. That's your next show. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, I actually have one next week, even next Tuesday at uh, Hawaiian Brian's. Oh, nice. wow. Yeah, yeah. Where can, we, where can we follow you again? One more time. Oh, so are you, are, you, are, you, are you active on social media? Yeah, I always put all my, my things on my Instagram. So it's tro, T-R-O-W-M-E-M-1, -E the number one, Shaka. And you made it really hard. I feel like it's I pretty complicated. You. <laughs> I know it shouldn't be that complicated, but in the extended version, we'll go over yes. what my real Instagram handle used to be, and then I had to change it because it was too rated R for right. students. My mom is convinced. I love you, mom. But she got hacked on her social media. So now, one day, I got a comment on one of my photos, and it's like this completely. I don't even know how to pronounce the name, but it's my mom. It's her first and last name all jumbled up. I'm like, why did you do that? You know your, your name is misspelled. Oh, I did that so they can't find me. I'm like, people can That's still so find funny. you. <laughs> well, we're going to actually continue in the extended version. Go ahead and follow us on YouTube. Go ahead and see our Instagram, which is Wine and Podcast, and follow all of us. You're yeah. going to want to stick around for this one. You're going to want to stick around for really the extended are. version. We'll see you there. Hey guys, welcome back to our extended version on YouTube. Be sure to tell your friends, hit the like button, subscribe. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Okay, I want to hear some jokes. What, like, are we going straight offensive right now? <laughs> oh, we are? Well, okay. Let's, let's talk about your real Instagram handle. Okay. What was so it before? Because my real, one chocolate. I know, it's really hard. It's and very I, complicated, I wanted, man. But I have, I have a bunch of shaka jokes, so I, I wanted to stick with that. My original was at Shaka's You Faka's. <laughs> Which was great. It was super easy to say. I'd be like, follow me at Shaka's You Faka's. Like, that was super easy to say. But I had a bunch of sixth graders and fifth graders right. coming up to me like, we know what your Instagram handle is. We know what your Instagram handle is. Tell us what it is. Tell us. We know what it is, but we want you here because the Faka's part, which I thought was great, but. I think it's it so was. catchy. It's it is, right? Shaka's you Faka's. Yeah, can you do all the little, the little Shaka, the baby Shaka? The baby the... Shaka. Okay. The mega Shaka. <laughs> the Molokai Shaka. The... <laughs> Just get him the from the night. Like that, yeah? <laughs> I'm so, so I'm gonna petition for you to bring that back. In fact, I'm gonna take that handle right now and just hold it for you. So when you retire, <laughs> when you're not a teacher I anymore. I bet you could take that back on your yeah, Instagram. You would I just know. not have your name on it. I gotta hide it somehow. See, oh. I'm really bad at technology, man. Like, I'm bad at technology. Are any of your students on it? Yeah, that's how oh, they found it. Oh, and another one, you. so I play softball. 
And the name of our team is Dixon <laughs> Cider. Now, if you say that fast, <laughs> it's going like, to go over some of your heads, but <laughs> Dixon Cider. Dixon Cider. Anyway, oh, like cider, I, like the alcoholic beverage. It is, but it's Dixon <laughs> yeah. Cider. So it's Dixon Cider. So I had a kid come up to me, go, my dad played against your team. What's your team name? And I'm like, ah, we're the green team, the green team. Because it's Dixon Cider, guys. The, I don't know. Might have gone over <laughs> I there. got it. That yeah. is so funny. You like beer? I love beer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The Welcome first thing I noticed podcast. was the Irish, I know, right? the Irish Pub and Grill shirt. And then you started talking about how much you love everything other than wine. Yes. Like, Perfect show. Yeah. Perfect. You're on, a, you're on a great show, man. Wine has alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're saying that your jokes, or you have a lot of jokes that the shaka is like a big thing. Yeah, so that's why I kept the shaka in there. There's gotta be a better name that's not offensive. Anyway, but my dad <laughs> comes out here and he's sitting shotgun, passenger seat as I'm driving. I let somebody over, he throws me the shaka, I throw him the shaka back and my dad goes, yeah, hang loose brother, hang loose. And I'm like, dad. I'm like, Dad, what is that? I'm like, that's like the rock on. He goes, it's the shaka. You guys call it the shaka. And I was like, bro, that's not the shaka. I finally teach him the shaka. Of course, he's throwing the howly shaka, which is where you stretch out your thumb and your pinky as far as it can go, right? And you just shake the shit out of it, right? Local shaka's a lot more relaxed, right? It's just yeah. like, shoot, right? You get the local shaka, the howly shaka. You get the Japanese shaka, we've all seen that, right? Moani's <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. like, Andrew, you're an idiot. That's not a shaka, it's a peace sign. Moani, it's the Japanese way of saying two atomic bombs is enough. <laughs> <laughs> two is enough. Give me a break, <laughs> this is your time, not mine. <laughs> I really didn't know, I was like, Chizu, you know, like, Chi I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Welcome to the extended version. Yeah. Welcome to the extended version. Anything can happen, guys! <laughs> 50 years has passed. It's, it's enough time, right? <laughs> yeah. I think so. It really did offend someone. Like, some oh. a lady came up after and was like, my daughter just left, and we're offended by that. Like, I grew up in Japan, and I was like, it was like 50 years ago. I'm really, And I'm like a nice guy. It was like 75 <laughs> years ago. 50 yeah, years yeah, ago. Right. I'm only a gym teacher, yeah. man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm Asian, so I'm supposed to be good at math, right? Yeah. <laughs> she was super offended. I guess don't think she came back to any of my comedy shows after that. But I mean, as like a comedian, you you're always going to be faced with, regardless of what you say or what you you know come up with, someone might take it in the wrong Rotten way. Tomatoes. So how do yeah. you kind of go past it? Like, I don't know, because I really like people to like me. Yeah. Right. Like I really like people to like me. <laughs> well, okay. Did you have to kind of Obviously, you had like a strong backbone and tough skin, but now being in, you know, being a comedian and having that where people come up like, oh, I didn't like that joke. Were you like, huh? At first, was it hard for you to like do you really still do take it? that? Do you still they do that don't, joke? oh yeah, definitely <laughs> do that joke. And then I add the punchline, I'm like, oh, are there too many Fujimoto's out here? Was that too <laughs> soon? <laughs> oh man. I, I don't know. Like, I just, I, if people tell me they don't like a joke, I kind of, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I didn't tell it right. Or if they're offended, it's kind of like, eh, I'm sorry I offended you, but oh. it's funny. People laughed. I'm sorry it offended you, but I'm really more offended when people are like talking during my set. I think it's a teacher thing. I'm like, mm -hmm. you have to listen to me. I'm up here telling jokes and you're back there talking. So what is like proper etiquette, I guess? Like if we were to show. go to a comedy show. You really should just, I, this sounds, it sounds like we're going to a golf tournament, but you really should just be quiet until a joke is told and then laugh. And that's wow. etiquette. Mm -hmm. No phones out, like no side conversations. If you do, you have to have it real quiet. Is that why when I watched Joy, uh, Joe Coy on Netflix, like there was a couple people in the audience like talking and he was like, yep, obviously they don't. he said something calling them out. So that's, really like offensive yes. to be talking. Well, it gets you off your timing because other people can hear people talking, right? Like, you gotta listen to me, right? I'm not the microphone. And other people can hear people talking, so it gets you off mm -hmm. as the comedian, you know? Like music, if people are talking, you're still just, you're being yeah. louder than them, you know? But sometimes I call people out and it backfires and 
then they don't laugh the rest of the time. And they're like, oh, you told me to be quiet. And they're like, Five year old. But I mean, you buy a sudden. ticket for a comedy show, <laughs> right. right? You're coming. Yeah. Like, you're not like, yeah. You don't do like, you don't just like stand up and on your table and start doing bits like in normal dinner, right? You like, people are buying a <laughs> yes, ticket. To people are to buying a ticket oh, and yeah. they start yapping and I call them out and then they get mm, all mm. huffy. That's but, on them, not on you. Exactly. Yeah. Are you, what, you seem like you're one time. of the people that talk. In comedy shows. You seem like you I would buy a been ticket. To a com- you know, the last comedy show I went That's to was Kevin Hart. Oh, and we, I think they were actually doing some snippets for Netflix, so we weren't able to take our phone out. And every time they cut, we had to be quiet. So it wasn't really like I didn't, I wasn't able to pull out and just continue to, mm-hmm. you know. And that upset you. No, I was <laughs> fine with it, Christopher. I watch, I watch a lot of Netflix, like stand up comedies. Which, is, which ones are your favorite? So I actually really like Kevin Hart. Okay. So like, I guess a lot of times you follow somebody, you, you like somebody who's like you and I mm-hmm. have that energy and he has that yeah. energy. And so I like that. He does physical stuff too. Um, I like Bill Burr cause he's from Boston and he's just got like this, like I hate everybody and I don't care what you think about me. Um, there's this one dude that I just discovered, Nate Bargatz. He's completely clean. He's this dude from like Tennessee and he's kind of got this little draw and he just stands there and he does jokes the way I wish I could. Like, cause you can oh. tell from just me doing this right here, I'm like <laughs> all over the place. And he can just get up there and just be chill and just do the punchline. And I can't do that. I gotta be like a Mexican jumping bean or whatever, <laughs> you know? But so I would say those are my three favorites right okay. now. Kevin Hart, Bill Burr, and Nate Bargatz, I think is how you pronounce it. Have you met like a famous comedian? Lanai. <laughs> oh, how was that? Bring him in here. Were you like <laughs> nervous? Did you like your palms sweat? I was, cause- Does he so, have that effect on people? So I never perform. I performed with them like, well, it must've been back in like May or something, April or May, we were at the Blue Note together. And I really was like, cause I had seen him on like the food truck show and I'd seen him on this and that. And I was like, whoa, I'm really performing with someone good now. And then he wasn't <laughs> funny at all. <laughs> Manai, I joke, I joke, I kid. <laughs> and then he's here in the flesh. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Are you afraid of cancel culture? Am I afraid of can? I don't think I'm big enough for cancer culture. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think, I, I think like if, physically if, or? If I, <laughs> uh, Chris doing short jokes. He's a comedian now. Low hanging fruit. I'm sorry. <laughs> did that you? Oh, look at him. He keeps going. The more wine he gets, he gets funnier and funnier. That was a dad joke. It's fun, but sorry. That's terrible. Um, I can't tell culture. I think you've got to be like big to be worried about that, right? But you, do shows, like, you do shows at Blue Note and like- Yeah, but you know, and like- you also are in the public eye. you cancel me. I, during COVID, they put up these screens, right? In front of us, like a uh, plexiglass and I licked it. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, they weren't happy. They were like, <laughs> cause it was a part of the bit. I was like, I got the vaccine <laughs> and I licked the plexiglass. And they were like, you gotta clean that up. Like, you gotta go up there. We're not cleaning that up. You gotta clean that up. Yeah, so that was the closest like I got to cancel culture, I guess, at the Blue Note. <laughs> they weren't very happy, but you know, I was funny, so they brought me back again. Uh-huh. And they still have you. And they still have yeah. me to this day. But you're a teacher. Yes. So, I mean, you're also like, you also have a day job. Yes, yeah. And yeah. you're not worried about uh, sometimes people are like, where do you teach? And I'm like, I'm not telling you. Or I say, why and I? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know, guys. You'll never figure it out. You are mic'd. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the joke's on us. You really do teach at why and I. Yeah. No, but that's good that you separate, you know, and you try to keep it separate. Just you wouldn't want any. And I've had yeah. actually, I had parents come up to me and be like, you're my kid's PE teacher. That was really funny. And I was like, what did I say? What did I say? What did I, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they've seen, they've come to shows. And I didn't know they were there. And now it's actually even more bizarre. I have kids that I had in like first grade who are now like 20 years old because I've been teaching wow. so long and they show up at shows and they're like, oh, I knew that was you. I knew that. I saw you on Instagram. I knew that was you. And it's like, whoa, crazy, Dude, They're like, drinking, they're at like shows. drinking at my shows wow. and buying me beer. And I knew them when they were six, you know? Wow. But that must be so, like, it's probably rewarding to you too, to see mm-hmm. your children. I'm not your children. Woo! <laughs> 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 Got you there. 
<laughs> Baby's on the mind, Lonnie. Baby's my second glass of wine. <laughs> Baby's coming up soon in the future. Oh, baby's okay. on the mind. Just How are you going to do that job? <laughs> How are you going to do this job with the baby? She'll be drinking grape juice. Yeah, I'll be drinking Welch's. <laughs> Not alcoholic wine. Well, she doesn't eat anything anyways, so. <laughs> She's vegan. Which makes for great TV. And he was over here asking my fiance, how do I like get back into shape? Okay. You have to be there, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you like I mean, more wine? Do you, act, do you have kids of your own? No, oh, nice. I do not. No kids, You just have all married. these students. Yeah, that's the best birth kids. control, gang. <laughs> that's the best birth control. Being with these kids from 7.30 to two, and then I get to go, aloha. <laughs> like, that's the best birth control. 7.30, wow. Yeah, so Whew. my job is actually great right now. I'm kind of a PE teacher. I, had, I play games with kids. Like that's How has that been, though, thing, that, like, since this whole like it was, shit? Uh, must have, have been hard. I have videos of me throwing socks because you don't know what the kids have. Like, you know, like they might not have a ball at home. Especially so when they live like, on Wai'anae, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Wai'anae, they might not even have socks. So. Talk about casual culture. <laughs> oh, Here it, it comes. <laughs> Here it comes in the comments. Oh, oh my gosh. We, yeah, can we edit that? Is there a... We have two minutes left, so we can take a good one. Oh, that's cool. so yeah. funny. Cool. We can cut it. But that's cool. The sock thing. <laughs> yeah. no, it really is. It really is. No, it's big. I grew up in Kapa'a, like. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. It's videos of me like throwing socks and <laughs> catching socks, and, like. But how would you? Oh, because it's on Zoom, yeah. so you would see. Oh, okay, I was like, how do you so know you if they're know. actually doing that? You gotta get well, creative. Well, that's the thing is you don't hear yeah. a lot of times. Like, didn't know. Do you make them like that. put your, their camera on or something? Uh, you try to, but then they're like, "Ooh, those kids are smart, man." They're like, yeah. "Oh, my camera's not working. My internet's not that good today." So it's like, whatever, you know. Like, I, yeah, at some point, you just got to give up. Yeah. You know? I hate that rule. I feel like it was, like, started by corporations. Like, camera's on, everybody, so we can see you awkwardly. Yeah. I know. I hate it, it is awkward, but you don't know what the kids are doing if they're not on camera. They're definitely playing video games. I'm sure. Like, they're smarter than me. Like, they're sitting there playing video games, even if their camera's on, you know? <laughs> they can make it look like they're doing stuff. There's, I mean, Chris probably was a pro when he was younger, pretending he was doing... <laughs> His job of being a student when he wasn't. That's true. Okay, I mean, I grew up, my mom's a teacher. So it was oh, like the is? same thing. Yeah. yeah, like my whole family are teachers, public school teachers, proudly. But like, it was the same thing. Like your kid's acting up in class too much or he's too talkative. And it's the most embarrassing thing for like a parent who is also a teacher to look their colleagues in the eye and be like, yeah. Wait, so were you saying that you were a troublemaker? A little bit, yeah. Oh. I mean, I wasn't the night, I wasn't the easiest kid. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's a PE class that you could probably pass, though. The Zoom one. <laughs> so. You wouldn't have to turn your camera on, Moani. I fine. wouldn't either. I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm here. I'm present. It counts. Do you have shoes Shoe on? Check. Shoes on. Show me your feet, Moani. Hold them up to the camera. Well, she does that um, on the side now, right? On the side. You don't show people your feet online? But no, that's something that you do. You have like, it's he has a fetish. He has a fetish. Anyways, I'm going to cut us here and, and let us enjoy this while he lasts. But thank you so much for staying tuned for our extended YouTube version. Be sure to tell your friends, hit the like button, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Wine Podcast. And thank you, Inspiration and Tears yes. also. Mm -hmm. for and our thank you, setup. Andrew Joyce. Thank you, guys. Thanks, this Andrew. Yes. Thanks thank for joining us. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. That was thank so much fun. We have done so much cheersing. This <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. This is the best job ever. <laughs> Not PE teacher. They're sitting Wine around.